Good morning. I wish you another prosperous day during this Easter tide, this time between Easter and Pentecost, where we follow Jesus and celebrate the risen Christ and all his glory. This morning, I want to talk about a, something a little controversial, um, if I may. And it's found in the Gospel of Mark. And according to scholarly uh, documents and most of the Greek early manuscripts of the accounting of the Gospel of Mark, we see this, um, the dramatic ending of this text in chapter 16, verse 8. And it, the, the Gospel ends this way. Overcome with terror and, terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. End of story. It was later that the resurrection story itself was added to this gospel. I think that it had so many powerful qualities in it, but it could not stand with the other three gospels without a resurrection story. And so we turned to our disciples of Mark to hear the accounting of the gospel, and it is written down in the form that we know it. I want to talk just a few minutes about the description of the encounters with Jesus according to the gospel of Mark after his resurrection. And according to this, in a nutshell, Jesus um, makes himself known to Mary of Magdalene, who, um, who goes back and shares the stories with the disciples, and they refuse to believe it. How can you see that, Mary? That's crazy. And then he makes himself known to two other disciples, and those two disciples then go and share with the others, and they say, ah, you're crazy. There's no way that can happen. And then Jesus himself enters the room finally with the 11 disciples, and he chastises them, saying, how dare you? Blessed are those who believe but do not see. And he begins to talk about these miraculous things that I don't think we're quite meant to take literally, but they're there and they have significance. For instance, handling snakes, drinking poison, ask it, do whatever. I don't think Jesus meant to physically handle snakes or to drink poison. I think what he was emphasizing is, if you believe in me, you can do miraculous things in my name. You have the power to speak truth into people's hearts. You have the power to speak wisdom into people's lives. You have the power to show the miracle that even happened in your own life. These are very powerful things. If we were to just limit it to what is said here literally, I think we would miss the whole meaning of what Jesus was looking for in speaking these last words to his disciples according to the Gospel of Mark. We can do miraculous things in Jesus' name. Not to do them for our own pleasure, or to prove that we are close to God, but simply to do them to show the wonders of God. How God can turn a heart like mine into beauty. How those of us who felt so lost find purpose and hope. These are the true miracles. They can outshine any snake handling or poison drinking or any of that, for they are true revelatory changes that we can witness. That is the true power of the Most High God. The true message of Easter 
and the resurrection. So believers in Christ, let us follow, let us lay down and worship, always giving thanks, always working the miracle and the power in his name to show and be living examples of the Most High God. For it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we offer honor and glory and praise and honor. Amen.